Thank you to Rocket Mortgage for sponsoring this video. Rocket Mortgage recently released a new series on the Rocket Learn YouTube channel. It explores fantastic, strange, and historic homes across America. If you like the unique destinations we visited in the past, then you'll love this series. Each episode explores the lore that makes each home unique and attempts to answer the question of what makes a home a home. The most recent episodes have explored the best of the best in American design, homes on lava, and even castles. If you want to check out each of these fantastic locations and understand the lore behind why people chose to call them home, we'll leave you a link to the Rocket Learn YouTube channel in the description below. So check out the Rocket Learn channel to watch full episodes on this home and other unique homes across America that they've featured in their home lore series. Now, on to the show. In this video, whoa, oh, whoa. we'll be trying three different crab experiences oh my God. with three vastly different price tags. Obama's kid's lunchbox looked like this. <laughs> in Vietnam, between the local seafood and the imported seafood, you could easily eat over a dozen different crab species just in this one city. From tiny microscopic crabs that can be eaten whole... I did not expect it to be so delicious. ...to giant clawed crustaceans that sell for over $700. Maybe it's filled with tapioca pudding. <laughs> Today, we're in search of new crabby creatures you've never seen before. Oh, wait, what the Cooked up in ways you could not imagine. He recommends us feeding the crab in beer. Or a beer sauna. You want to do it for yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> From the extremely affordable. It is just delicious. To the shockingly expensive. Should we give it a little bit of a dip in the soy sauce? How dare you. And it all starts here. Sir, put her there. Meet Mr. Chet, owner of Min Hui. He's here selling everything our planet's vast ocean has to offer. The first time we came here, we had isopods. The second time we came here, it was for giant snails. Today, we're here for a crab I've never tried before. This is the Chinese hairy crab, a native crustacean found in East Asian waters. Though it's just the size of a fist, these aggressive creatures are capable of wreaking havoc on the environment. So much so, they're even banned in the USA. But in places like China and Vietnam, they're eagerly greeted with open arms and open mouths. I want to talk more about it, but I feel like we need to actually see the animal, the creature itself. Oh, Twin, you happen to be right by the aquarium and you don't have any sleeves today. Could you just grab one for us to take a look at? Buddy, I see claws that are open right now. That's not helping. Why do they look so active? Yes, bobbing for crabs. I'm scared. Believe in yourself. Here we go. Oh my god, why is that one trying to attack me? The worst that happens, you get a manicure. Or a pedicure. <laughs> no, I can't. No, at least touch it. I can't see anything. I can't help you, I have my watch on. I think she has it. Come on, twin. You're doing you got great. This. Oh. I got it. Fantastic. <laughs> It's quite small, but it's still very, very popular in the market because it has a lot of meat and roe inside. And then the best way to cook it would be curry. For one person, about how many crabs would you need? One person usually have five of these. That's a lot. Chinese hairy crab curry. Step one, the steam. What about the price? How much is about one crab? Roughly $7. I'm actually kind of surprised by that price because you can get a whole rotisserie chicken for $7. Granted, chicken, not hairy, and not a crab. Once the crabs are thoroughly cooked, they're cut in half, coated with flour, then deep fried. I think of curry as a strong flavor. Will that cover up the flavor of the crab? Curry is very popular because it's full of roe. The curry and the roe together will be perfect for bread. I can't wait. Now, the curry sauce. Combine chilies, lemongrass, curry powder, condensed milk, coconut milk, more seasonings, and a natto oil. Add the fried crab and let it soak in all those delectable, delicious flavors. As you can see inside here, it's full of roe. It smells so good. Oh, I got it. Mm. Oh, there's a lot of eggs in there. The eggs are like meaty, man. Mm. It got some bite to it. Ah, hot. The roe is so rich and creamy. They're almost like chewy, the way they've steamed up inside. And I think they're a great pairing to the curry. Quinn, if you came here, would you be digging into these tiny claws and these tiny legs looking for meat? Of course. I'm using a chopstick and I'm just pushing it on one end and then the meat come out the other end. Now, have you burned more calories or <laughs> earned more calories? I think it's worth it. A little bit. Yeah. I got a crazy idea. Row sandwich. Row sandwich, boom. We've got plenty of roe. We're gonna extract that from the crab and that is gonna be placed onto some of this bread. And then I'm gonna just completely saturate that with this curry sauce. Mm-hmm. Oh! And I got some shell in mine for texture. 
the brininess of that roe with the sweetness and the creaminess of that curry. It is a match made in heaven. That's beautiful. This is a whole experience. So yeah, you need to take your time a little bit, but I would give it a lot of score out of 10. A lot of score out of 10. <laughs> wow. Next up, a flashy, medium-priced crab experience right here in one of Saigon's most giant aquarium slash restaurants. With dozens of live seafood creatures to choose from, you never have to worry about eating fresh. How many dollars worth of inventory do you think you have right now? And this is Mr. Kung. Legend has it, he once killed a merman with his bare hands. $148,500. Is that real? Yeah. Can you imagine if the power goes out? Knock on wood. Yeah, mình có máy phát điện rất lớn. Oh! Woo! There's a backup generator and he knows CPR. So let's talk about crabs. Vietnam has such a vast coastline and so much seafood that's caught, trapped, and brought back to the mainland. This crab today that we're going to be trying, it is called the red crab. You got it, Sonny. Look at this. You got it, Sonny. You got it. How are you not terrified right now? How does that look? Can you put it here? Of course. The red crab is a species native to Vietnam, caught about 150 miles from Phuwe Island. It is a beautiful creature. First of all, it does have big arms, really distinctive black claws, contrasted against a crimson red body, a huge carapace with ancient medieval spikes on the side as well. Despite not having much meat, this red crab is still a prized delicacy because the morsel of meat that it does have is said to be very, very yum. These are saltwater crabs, and so they come from the ocean, and so therefore they're not farmed. When you're farming it, they don't get a chance to really be in Mother Nature. They don't get a chance to take in all those nutrients from the seaweed and the kelp and the sunshine. This red crab will be prepared two ways, stir-fried and steamed in beer. To stir-fry, the crabs are first cut into small chunks, then deep-fried for fast, even cooking. Then they're moved to a separate pan and stir-fried along with ginger and sticky sweet tamarind sauce. This has been cooked beautifully. It's looking gorgeous. Just like you. So let's start off with the inside of the crab, the innards, the brains. Is there brains in there? There is crab brains. And your crab brains are the specialty. But is it really a brain? Yes. Yes, it is really a brain. Oh, oh. I got some part that tastes possibly like eggs and partially like fat, and it was very livery. Very irony in flavor. Briny. So that is all that is in the head. It's not a very full head. Pretty empty in there. Not making a joke. Don't. Not making no. a joke. I'm holding myself back. Here is the claw. What I love is that the goo on here, I mean, you could just lick the outside of the shell. It is so thick and sweet. That's delicious. And that tamarind flavor is tart, it's sweet. It really adheres to the shell. Oh, you have a nice sized claw there. But, 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 I think I will not be able to crack it. Believe in yourself, Twin. Have this one, no. Never believe Don't yourself. Don't believe in yourself. Always give up. Our first real bite of red crab. Let's go for it. I find it to be sweet. It's just economy sized. The absolute best part is the glaze. I just wish I had something to put it on besides my hands. That being said, we have one more course and I saved our biggest crabs for that. So. Now, the beer steamed crab, a dish likely invented by a raging alcoholic and a person I'd love to hang out with. And no, this time I don't mean Calvin. The crabs make their way into a giant pan, then ginger, then the beer. Once the crab feels safely submerged in this liquid gold, crank up the heat. This is what I call drunken crab. Crab that has been steamed in beer, and then it is still steaming right here. Now, Twin doesn't actually drink, so how do you feel about eating beer? I'm already drunk. <laughs> Ow. I'm going to try to rip open its body. Ah. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, like a helpless goat. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Oh. Mm, I almost got an ounce. An ounce would be a lot. It is not dense with meat. I've got a decent sized claw right here. When you break this, it seems big. Oh, wait, what the? F it is big. I got the ultra red crab experience right here. I too got the ultra. I think we give it a little bit of a dip in the beer. Oh. That was nice. Really nice. Here's the thing, I could stand to do that about 100 more times. It is sweet, it falls apart. It's like almost flaky, like a tilapia. This is a lot of work and the claw is the only thing that actually have meat. Here's my tip. Next time, go with the king crab. For us, it's too late at this location. But guys, we have one location left. Ooh.
we've come to Rockefeller Restaurant. What they lack in exterior design, they make up for it with one of the absolute finest culinary experiences available in this city. Can you describe the type of food you're preparing here? We are doing uh, omakase and uh, contemporary Japanese cuisine. Omakase, or it's up to you. It's a menu-less dining style where you hand over complete control to the chef. Perfect if you're looking for an expertly designed meal or if you just hate making choices. I love the idea because it's like, give me a bunch of money and I'll just give you whatever I want. Yes, we give you whatever we want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Among their greatest hits, the fatty tuna chutoro, uni and toro truffle bruschetta, and awabi amani hokkaido abalone. Trust me, those are real words, but today... We have come here for the most expensive crab experience that's possible. This is the Hokkaido hairy crab. And now where is it from? The coast of Hokkaido. They will be on a more shallow sea. I like how it is kind of an organized looking crab. It kind of makes sense that it grew up in Japan. Our omakase consists of three courses, all made using this extravagant creature. First, kigani sashimi. Steam the crab for 45 minutes, then soak it in ice. You know how much the crab alone would cost? We got from Japan. One kilo is around two million plus. Once the crab cools, the meat from its legs are extracted with surgical precision. To me, that's like really incredibly pricey. Is it because of the crab or is it because it comes from Japan? Both. After the air flown here, it costs more, of course. They get flown here. Business class? First class. Next, body meat is collected using the perfect tool and lots and lots of patience. Assemble all the meat inside the shell, then garnish with flowers to help justify the price. We have our first course right here, the Hokkaido Hairy Crab Sashimi. But before we eat that, oh, what is this? A traditional Japanese adult beverage. Oh, that's <laughs> well, that's really good. On to the food. I will start with the leg because it's on top. No soy sauce. You want the sweetness of the crab to really permeate your palate. Mm. <laughs> Sweet, flaky, but more fatty than what we've had so far. Under that, we have the body meat. One big bite, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my god. Different texture, juicy. That's delicious. First course, stunning. Loved it. 10 out of 10. I can't wait to see what they bring next. Course two, chawamushi crab with assorted luxurious seafood. Mix chicken eggs with dashi broth. Filter the mixture, combine it with shrimp and a scallop, then steam for 10 minutes. Now, layer in crab body meat, salmon roe, sea urchin, sea tangle, scallions, caviar, their signature oil, and then flowers. They have just brought our second course right here, and already the room is full of the aroma of truffle. So good. The Hokkaido uni should really bring this fresh sea essence into your mouth. Just close your eyes when you eat it, and just imagine seagull. And then the horn. I'm gonna start with that shrimp. Mm. 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 The egg is silky smooth, it's smoky. I don't want to swallow right now. First time I ever say that. Truffle has a really nice earthiness. Contrasting that with the seafood, it has a really nice land to sea story here. That I don't, I don't. Yes, it's a novel. So right here, I got all the crab meat on a beautiful bed of this silky egg. Whoa, heaven. So much going on. Juicy, an abundance of flavor from that crab just popped so hard. I wish I had the money to be addicted to this. <laughs> you actually do. The charamushi has a great texture, smooth, supple. They use a lot of the steamed crab jus, and that's where you really gain that roundness of crab flavor. I can't wait to see where we're traveling to next with our third dish. I should be a food writer. For today's final taste of crab, we're going with the Mount Rushmore of high-end ingredients. Saute foie gras with teriyaki sauce. Dip wagyu beef in hot sukiyaki sauce. Now create a foundation using sushi rice flavored with sesame seeds and soy sauce. Hit that beautiful wooden desk drawer with some beef. Then the crab meat. Garnish with sea tangle and scallion. Then add salmon roe, sea urchin, a poached egg, truffle, and their signature oil. Three, two, one, self-reveal. Wow! Oh, wow! Oh my god. Obama's kid's lunchbox looked like this. Aw, foie gras again. I wanted dolphin meat. 
it's like they created a whole new world. And it's like, here are the mushroom mountains. Over here is the Salmon Row Valley. Let's start with the foie gras. There's only one reason that we have geese in the world. God, the flavor of foie gras is so amazing. And this would be illegal if you're in New York. Oh, the wagyu, it just looks like a big, thin strip of delicious, succulent, soft meat. Mm. <laughs> oh, that is an incredible sensation. Flavor is so tender. That is delicious, but I must say, it's not a crab. No, it's not. I say we lend a little bit of that egg yolk, maybe even some uni to the crab, and get a delicious crab bite. Mm -hmm. I could die right now. The bottom rice layer is so delicious. The crab just lends a sweet, delicious juiciness to anything around it. That was the best crab I've ever had. You know what we have to do? Finish eating, go outside, and decide which one gave us the most bang for our buck. Man, today's gonna be really a challenge. <laughs> really tough to call. The last one? Rockefeller. Number three all day, baby. Just because I didn't have to do anything, the real definition of luxury is not getting the crab meat by yourself. It's also a true experience of fine dining. Absolutely amazing. To see the chef take an ingredient and serve it three different ways, it truly was an experience. The care and time and love that went into it, the creativity. It didn't even need to be matched with all those other ingredients, the roe, the uni, but it didn't hurt. <laughs> it didn't hurt. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. Location one, food one. Location one, food right. Wow, I, I didn't even get that out. Location one, food one. This is the, this is the cheap. But we're all mentally impaired. Right here is a red lobster inside. Sorry, sorry. Not red lobster, red crab. Jesus Christ, I want this crab inside of me. Good joke, good joke. What's the joke? I want to eat it. Oh, can you rotate your box? We should all be similarly oriented. Can I say oriented mm -hmm. in Asia? And are people usually satisfied? Yes, most of the time. And the other times? <laughs> most of the time. It's like the same for the people who watch my show. Someone must catch these crabs. Twin, you already caught some crabs. Calvin, caught I some crabs. Also. What kind of crabs? <laughs> <laughs> the dangerous kind. Hey guys, that is the end of the video and the end of this mini series of cheap versus expensive foods here in Vietnam. I want to say a huge thank you to both of these two. First of all, Twin, quick aqua dance shake. You can find her right here on Instagram. See what she's up to. Probably not that much. Then we have Calvin over here, my man. Thank you so much. Powerful handshake. FK and Deliciousness is where you'll find him on YouTube. YouTube, on Instagram. Follow him and his fun food journeys in Vietnam and beyond. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A triple piece. All right. Now we're going to do cheap versus expensive flamingo. Who's going to pay for that meal? I don't have any money. I thought you paid already. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run.